Thank you for watching this Fringe Academy recording. You can view all videos and resources from past Fringe Academies on the Fringe Academy resources page of our website. You can also book free tickets for any upcoming Fringe Academies by going to the What's On section. Enjoy! Hello, thank you Amy. Thank you, my name is Holly. I am the Director of World Fringe. Um, it is an association that represents 300 Fringe festivals all over the world and uh, we have been going since about 2007 um, and we support and communicate and uh, tell everyone about how amazing Fringe festivals are and uh, I don't need to tell you, I'm sure you know how amazing they are um, and here with us today we have got I think nine Fringe festivals um, coming to tell you all about uh, what they do, how they've changed, how life changed for them and their Fringe Festival during COVID and also what they can offer now as festivals in the digital realm and how what artists might tour to them without leaving their own countries um, and what they offer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by asking our Fringe Festivals to introduce themselves, um, tell us what Fringe you're from, what time is it? Where you? Know, what country? What time is it? Because some of you, it's crazy o'clock. Um, and uh, yeah, just give us a little bit of a background. Uh, why don't we start with um, Kath? Hi, yeah, uh, I'm in. I'm in Brighton <laughs> as well. Um, so I I uh, produce the ones with Arts Fringe, and uh, I work with Ho Helly. <laughs> Holly on World Fringe and uh, it is 11.06 yeah Dan yep that's you oh shit it's me um, oh pardon my <laughs> French is this an 18 plus uh, recording oh god damn it I just ruined it already um, uh, I'm Dan from Talon Fringe uh, we're doing a, a, a mixed fringe this year. We're in Talent Estonia for those people that don't. It's over there, you know. It's over there. Uh, it's a bit to the right of most of you, uh, uh, next to next to Finland and Russia and Latvia. And we're doing a fringe from the 18th of August to the 19th 19th of September. It's going to be uh, live in venue and also live, 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 extra mega live, live digital online, uh, aka not recorded anything everything's it'll be live like this like actually like interaction Ooh. live uh 100 digital uh live stuff within in real life live 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 stuff going on uh that's what we're doing and we've set up a great little um uh, we're working we, we've been for the last years doing some things to set up a platform where you can actually do live digital stuff with a paywall and it's not uh, going to get shut down via YouTube or Twitch or, uh, and it gives you 1080 HD. So it's better than zoom, better than this. And you don't have to have people have cameras on and you can also then have a login free anonymous chat widget on the side. So people can actually turn up to your digital venue uh, just like they do in a theater. They don't actually have to have a name or a profile behind them so they can heckle call that your shit or oh, bloody hell it's 18 plus again uh, without actually having to put their name there and that you can track them. So that's pretty cool. Um, and with a paywall and all of that, and that is a digital fringe venue. Good. I think I've said enough. There's loads of people next, please. And we can go into more digital information in a minute, in a minute as well. Uh, thanks Dan. Uh, Lois. Hi y'all, I am Lois. I'm with the Hollywood Fringe Festival in Hollywood, California in the States. Um, it is 3 a.m. here, so I'm just going to apologize right off the bat if my brain starts to go elsewhere. I wrote down notes so I remembered my name and my festival name, so hopefully things don't go too awry. <laughs> Thanks, Lois. Uh, Steve? On mute. No, I'm not on mute. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Steve Go. I'm the founder and director of the Prague Fringe Festival. Uh, this is the beginning of our 20th year, which is super exciting. Uh, we're doing all sorts of online stuff, which we'll tell you about in due course. It's 12.09 and it's 24 degrees centigrade. Ooh, nice and warm. Uh, thank you, Steve. Celeste. Hello, I'm Celeste de Marie. I'm sitting here on the beautiful island in Croatia, Tres in Croatia, and uh, 
I am preparing with a big team the first ever Croatian Swiss French Festival, and it will start next year. And um, we know that maybe still COVID will be a um, theme, so we plan it in a hybrid version, so we will have live people on stages, in the venues, we want to make a film festival and a and, and lot of stuff. You, will, you can see everything on the website. And um, it will be pre-recorded live per virtual or live on stage, what will be also streamed. If the COVID situation is fine, we will meet all on the island. Um, yeah, if you have more questions later, I'm here and happy to answer. It's great to have you with us and your new festival role. It's brilliant. Uh, Thank you. Um, Anna. Hi everyone. My name's Anna Melpantidis. I'm the Program Manager at Independent Arts at Melbourne Fringe. Uh, so I'm zooming in from Wurundjeri country here in Nam, Melbourne. And for those who are blind or low vision, I've got dark um, brown long hair and um, I'm wearing kind of a musty top and I've got brown eyes and gold hoops in. Um, so uh, as I said, I work at Melbourne Fringe and it is 8 p.m. here. Um, uh, we're just coming out of lockdown at 11.59 p.m. tonight. So pretty exciting Great. time here in Melbourne. Awesome. Thanks, Anna. Um, Helena. Hi, everyone. I'm Helena Bunker or Bunker, if you like. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders of Stockholm Fringe Festival, Stockholm, Sweden. Um, we are about to embark on our 12th year this year. Um, we had a challenging year last year, as everyone has had. Um, and we did a hybrid version of our festival last year, which was a very good way of continuing our spirit. And this year we will continue with a hybrid version as well, but a bigger live program and with more uh, digital developments that I will talk about later. And the time is 12.12 and I'm very excited to be here today. Yeah, it's great to see you. I was going to ask Julian, but he's disappeared. So I'm going to go straight to Heather, because um, you have to go quite soon. So why don't you tell us um, everything about your fringe, um, how you made major changes in your festival, and you had one of the kind of biggest live fringes as well. So, um, Tell us, tell us all about Adelaide. Heather. Hello, um, everything froze there. I'm Heather, director at the Adelaide Fringe, and I'm coming to you from Ghana land, and I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging, and also to any First Nations people who um, may be tuning into this uh, recording. It is uh, 7.45, PM here in Adelaide and it's very cold. I don't know what it is, but it's warm enough to wear, a, uh, cold enough to wear a scarf, which is not often in Adelaide. And um, uh, for those who um, uh, need any describing, um, I'm uh, wearing at the moment, my hair, my hair color changes regularly, but today it's kind of goldy orange. I'm wearing glasses and a red scarf. And I'm coming in from the Adelaide Hills where the staff of the Adelaide Fringe are currently doing a planning day. Um, we finished in, well, in 2020, we finished on March 14th and the COVID restrictions hit on March 15th. So we got in by the skin of our teeth in 2020, um, sold around about 850,000 tickets that year. Um, and um, we embarked then, a few months later, we decided to do a pilot of a digital fringe online. And we um, had um, some great lessons from that experiment that we worked with um, lots of artists doing digital streaming of live shows and understanding what people would pay for, what people would buy tickets for. So when we did come to planning 2021 fringe, um, we already knew that we would include the digital offering in the mix. Um, but look, we were very lucky here in South Australia. We haven't had a lot of lockdowns. We've been living fairly COVID free because of um, our borders being completely shut to the world. 
and um, we had um, we had to think very adaptively and agile and be flexible, like everybody just pivoting all the time. But in the end, we were able to host a fringe in March, February this year, and we had around about 900 shows. It was uh, we are always over February, March for 31 days and nights, and this year we sold. We're just doing the annual review right now um, and we're catching up all our statistics. Uh, we sold 630,000 tickets in real life, which, um, you know, was phenomenal. We certainly did not expect that we were going to be able to do that. Uh, so everybody did come out. We had a lot of COVID restrictions. We had 50% in the house. Every second seat had to be empty. Um, we had a look QR code scanning social distancing, we had all those rules, but it was amazing because the venues just were able to roll out fringe as, as best as possible and it really was magic. But we did also have digital online offerings. A lot of artists chose to do that. And um, we had ticket buyers from 25, I think, different countries. Um, but obviously we learned some lessons there too because where um, people, were doing a live show in Adelaide and if all the tickets were sold out because of the 50%, they did better on the digital online than if someone was just doing a digital online show coming in from overseas without any other marketing presence. So it was really interesting to see which ones did sell okay on the digital, but nothing replaces in real life, of course. And because we were able to have an in real life fringe, we, we, you know, thrived in that environment. And it sounds, I'm, I'm so excited to hear about Brighton. It sounds like you're having a great fringe over there right now. Um, we also raised a lot of donations, many more, don hundreds of thousands of dollars of more and, and, a, and a, from the government as well. And we gave every single dollar of those out to artists as grants to help them because we're open access, 100% open access. The risk is on the artist in the venue. There's no guarantee um, fee to be in the fringe in Adelaide. It's all risk and you just get paid the box office. So we did raise hundreds of thousands of dollars and give out grants to artists to help them lower the risk. Our box office year was about, well, the box office was about $16.5 million. Um, we normally have a box office of about $20 million. So obviously it was down a bit, but so was the sack. We, that was due to the capacities in the venue being 50% uh, limitation. So we were just thrilled that we could, we had to plan for every possible outcome, but we were just thrilled that we were able to actually have a fringe in 2021. And here we are now planning for 2022. And we, you know, as we all know, COVID is here with us longer than we may have thought. So I think we're still planning to try and raise all that money again and, and help artists as much as we can for 2022. Incredible. Thank you, Heather. Um, what you did was amazing. You changed and you changed such a huge festival so quickly um, and it obviously has paid off really well. Um, I know you... I must say the team, the team's amazing. Everyone's very... We did... We actually did training in agile thinking, training in, um, we actually did workshops in how to make us think the best would happen rather than the worst. <laughs> we tried to get into that mindset because otherwise you're just in drown in what the worst scenarios are. Even you have yeah. to be aware they happen, but we were just training ourselves to think very agile and be willing to change our mind and not think that that was a bad thing. Um, and yeah, so we just were very flexible. We were very exhausted by the end of it though. <laughs> yeah, that sounds amazing. Well, can you give our best to all your amazing staff? And I hope that your training away day or night goes really well. Hi. And lots of love, lots of love from have all the Adelaide staff to everybody. We all miss you. We love you so much. We can't wait to see you again. Um, we're just so, um, thankful that we're staying connected like this thank you so much all right heather we see you soon thanks ever so much take care Bye. Bye. Uh, next up we have got um are you still here julian yes you are there you are we got julian the man of the moment from the festival that we're in at the moment tell us how's it going um 
it's exhausting. <laughs> You've forgotten. Um, yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's going really, really well. Um, we've had, uh, I, it, looking at the statistics, I think we're, we're, I think we're up to probably close to 50,000 ticket sales now. Um, wow. uh, the, the, the number of audiences have completely taken us by surprise, really. Um, we knew that, we'd, that we knew there'd be a good, good response from, from what we found in surveys that we, we put out. But um, yeah, I, I think just people are just so desperate to go out and see see work. We, we've this year's festival. We've got something in the region of six hundred events. Uh, around one hundred and fifty of those are digital. Um, so around four hundred and fifty have are, have been um, uh, live. Um, we are uh, across, I think, ninety venues this year as well. Um, it's, uh, yeah, we, we've got the big hubs, the Warren and the Spiegel tent um, and the Savoy Pavilion outdoors um, and some of the familiar names that we've had here before as well. Um, it's great, exhausting. I've just done, I've, I've just been doing the, the lights and sound for a show at the Spiegel tent for the last couple of nights as well. So it's uh, <laughs> burning the candle at both ends a little bit. <laughs> That's amazing. And how many days have you got left? Um, yeah, sorry. Yeah, we, we run until... So the, the, all of the venues go until the 27th of June, um, but the Warren and the Spiegel tent will be running a little bit longer to the 11th of July. Um, and there may be some other, other events at other venues as well if they decide to take part because um, uh, registration remains open. So if, if, if anybody thinks of putting on something, uh, then they still can. moment. Oh, amazing. I love that. You can just carry on registering to the last day. It's the beauty of not having a brochure. We, um, yeah, isn't it? Uh, awesome. Yeah. I think that's probably something we will see a big change in uh, brochures and printing going forward. Um, we've got a surprise visitor, um, Zena. Do you, do you want to say hello uh, and tell us where you're from, what fringe you're, you're what festival you're from? You're, you're muted, Zena. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so I run the Manchester Fringe and the Camden Fringe. Um, Camden, the plan is to go ahead in August. Um, we've got about 180 shows confirmed now. Um, and we've got applications from about another 400 people that we're trying to find spaces for. Um, and it's a mixture of live and digital mostly live which is a bit worrying um and then manchester we're hoping to go ahead in september and that's kind of a month behind where we are with camden um and a mixture of things um and i don't know about you like i'm finding it i'm finding getting companies sorted with venues a lot harder than usual has anyone else found that Yes. Yeah, definitely. It's much harder. Mm. And also like the small venues that we normally use, we're just not able to, you know, we haven't been able to use. So we're sort of relying on bigger venues too. And, that, and that's hard in itself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A lot, so a lot of venues have even. been, a lot of venues have, have remained closed or decided not to take part this year because they're just not able to accommodate people. Yeah. Especially as we know, uh, I mean, by, by, well, I don't know, by, by August or end of July, August, who knows where we'll be in terms of social distancing. Um, but I, I know, well, haven't been upstairs at the Oxford Arms. Um, it's, it's quite tight. You probably get, it's, what, 15, yeah. 15 people in there? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I mean, we, we sort of got everything crossed for the 21st, but it's not looking good, is it, really? I think there's already talk that that's going to definitely be delayed by at least two weeks, if not a month. Yeah. yeah. If, if not mm. longer, yeah. Mm. Um, would anyone else like to tell us how they are uh, changing the way that they normally work? Kath, go for it. Yeah, so we, we're starting on the 25th 
of June and uh, planning to go to the 11th of July. So um, obviously we started making our plans last September. <laughs> so it's, you know, it was a very, very different landscape then. And it was very difficult to see what the landscape was going to be. So we obviously had to make 8,000 million different <laughs> contingency plans. Um, and so we just anyway we plowed ahead and so what we decided to do was like a hybrid model and our registration form was a hybrid registration form which technically has been very challenging but it meant that at any point an artist could go back in to their registration form and just flip it over like from live to digital or digital to live so but it has made our whole process quite um, complicated once once uh, the government kind of laid out a roadmap we could plan a little bit better um, so we've always planned for a stage three scenario which is the may the 17th and we are obviously still planning for that but um as, as well as the government guidelines, we have to go by our borough guidelines. And so our borough currently weren't allowing any events to take place until the 21st of June anyway. So outdoor events um, in, in their public spaces. So we've, we're have we just squeaking in and I think they did it because we are council run. I think they did it just, just for us in a way. So we're literally the first events in Wandsworth that are allowed to go ahead. So, um, you know, obviously we, we are sort of like their flagship um uh project so we're um we've got a lot uh to plan for still and just make sure it all happens safely and and well so uh yeah so it's it's been quite difficult and we have got a lot of digital projects as well and uh yeah it remains to be seen how how what the appetite is going to be for those so, that, so yeah. that's the one's worth fringe yeah, sorry, did I not say? Yeah, one to start fringe. Yeah. <laughs> Fringe.com, happening 25th of June to 11th of July, sorry. Um, All right, that's great. Cool. Starting in seven yeah. days. Woo, wow. Any oh. anybody, anybody else want to uh, say how they're reacting and what their offer is? Lois, go for it. Also, Hollywood Fringe. Um, we we played the game of cancellation, postponement, cancellation, postponement, and so we postponed our normal June festival to take place in August, with the hopes that guidelines will kind of loosen to the point where we can have a hybrid. Although currently we're we're going with like what can we do without any back stepping. So right now we're a digitally driven festival with the possibility of moving hybrid if new guidelines drop. Since right now there are still very strict restrictions in California. Um, but the good news with that is we have a whole lot of live stream options. Uh, so just like I think Dan said, live, live, live. That's kind of the game we're playing at Hollywood Fringe as well. Um, our local artists are going to be using venues to live stream from um, as kind of their headquarters. But we've also added a registration type this year to um, live stream from anywhere. So that is for people locally that are just not quite ready to jump into normalcy and, and go film at a theater or, um, you know, and enter into that sort of the world, but um, also for internationals, since that's a huge part of our festival. So to be able to keep that element and have it be safe without people having to fly in. Uh, so we will have that this year. And then even if we pivot hybrid, all of our events and programs will take place digitally. That way the community will be in community no matter where they're located. So it's even if we pivot, it, everyone still gets the same experience, including a digital fringe central that we're really excited to announce soon. It'll be very interactive and hopefully that same sense of community. Love that, a digital fringe central. That's awesome. Um, well, can, can, can I ask uh, as well, Lois, uh, on that question, because we're talking a, a lot about digital as well. Um, does that mean that are you doing any pre-recorded stuff or is it when we talk about live, like what, what is it when you talk digital? That's a great question. Um, we have a whole, um, so uh, hollywoodfringe.org is going to have a ton more information, um, but we're, we're calling it the live element. So does it have to be 100% start to finish live? No, but as long as there's a live element happening in the moment, um, it can count in our festival. It is open access. So the one rule we have is it be live. Um, but like I said, that can be a mixture of peer recorded sections with just a through line of live, um, you know, kind of up to the artist. But yeah, there has to be a live element. Otherwise, uh, we're, we're a TV and film city. So we kind of had to play the game of we're in direct competition with film already. How can we make the live theater aspect happen with our digital festival? Cool. 
Um, Steve, how was the eclipse? Did you just go? Well, it hasn't happened yet. I just had oh. a little test. I went to have a look. Okay, a <laughs> I saw you turn off. Uh, tell us about Prague Fringe and what's going on. What's going on? Yeah, it's been an interesting year. Uh, ordinarily, I, although we've existed 20 years, we are actually a relatively small festival. We run for nine days in seven theatres and about 50 acts. So when we cancelled it uh, back in March, um, we initially thought, oh, you know, you know, nobody's going to be caring about digital stuff by the time it's May. So, like, what's the point in doing anything? Of course, little did we know that this was going to go on forever and ever. So we did a digital festival in May, which was rather sweet and very well attended. And it was just pulling together sort of as, as quickly as we could elements of what would have been the real festival. But later in the year, we got a, a special grant from the Ministry of Culture here in the Czech Republic to do some live streaming of digital work. And we did a very cute little festival called Fringe Reimagined. And instead of bringing the world to Prague, which we normally do, we presented Prague to the world. And we had ten, about eight different shows that were live streamed from a venue <coughs> in the center of the city. And as, as we've all experienced now, it was just the freakiest thing to go down to your festival on the opening day and to discover that there were no audiences, no posters, the cafe was shut. It was like, what the, what's going on, you know? Open the venue. And it's just full of all this incredible technical equipment that you've never seen before. And bang, we went live to the world. And we had thousands of, of viewers all over the world with the help of Czech centers and embassies and such like and so forth. It was super exciting. So when our 20th year uh, began, which is this year, we should, well, we should have actually had our 20th festival last week. And because we couldn't, we decided to make this whole year a celebration of Prague Fringe. Um, and we're trying to come up with names and we decided that we would do the Prague Fringe prologue, which was the start of the whole celebration. And we um, opened applications up to any theatre performance that would like to uh, present their work on Prague Fringe uh, prologue, but with the idea that a certain selection of them would be picked by a, a, um, a, a local streaming uh, website, the, the Czechs, Czech Republic's version of Netflix for theatre, which is called Dramox, which, is, which was super exciting. So there's 11, 10 shows that are about to go up on Dramox in the coming uh, weeks. And they'll get a three to five year contract out of that. So it was really exciting for us and for the artists. Now they're about to go, um, well, I think they might already be European. So if you're in Europe and you're, you want to check it out, it's just dramox.cz. Um, but they are about to go global and they're going to be translating all the Czech shows that they have, about 100 shows there at the moment, into multiple European languages. So it, we believe it's going to have a huge impact on the artists that get selected. So because it was so successful, we're going to do, as well as a replacement festival later this year in uh, November, we're going to do P2, P3 and P4. So three other waves of prologue, allowing artists from all over the world to submit high quality digital work with the, the, the idea that some of them will be selected um, for for Dramox. So amazingly, one of the most amazing things, the resilience of our wonderful artists who were told in March last year that the festival wasn't going to happen. I think it's something like 60% of the artists who were supposed to come to the festival last May agreed to reschedule to October last year, agreed to, to um, reschedule to May, i.e. now, this year, and are still agreeing to reschedule to November. And with a view that, they, that who knows what's going to happen with that. We're in the middle of planning that. And I mean, that's just mad. It, 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 the resilience of these wonderful artists who just desperately want to perform their work and they want to hold their place at the Prague Fringe has been overwhelming to us. We did raise quite a bit of money uh, during the first online festival last May. And so during the year, uh, as companies have dropped out, we've been, been able to 
refund them 100% of their participation fees, which was really important to us, despite the fact that we'd obviously ourselves spent a lot of money getting the festival ready to, to go up until March. So there's a bunch of stuff going on, but it's exciting. I think it's, um, I think the most exciting thing is just to see how, how resilient we all are and to see how, you know, the art will out in the end. You know, we've all gone through this crazy time. We've survived to one degree or another, uh, not without hardship and stress and worry, but we're just constantly creating, you know, and if we can't do that, then, then what can we do? You know, we're creative people and let's adapt, let's create and continue to create and continue to adapt. And I'm super excited to see what work's going to come out at live festivals in the coming years, reflecting on all of this madness that we've gone yeah. through and heartbreak and, and sorrow and all sorts. But it's been a really exciting year for us. What I, was, I was laughing about the idea about brochures and nobody doing brochures. In 2018, leading up, no, 2019, leading into the 2020 festival, we said, right, we're definitely not going to do brochures that next year. It's going to be the first fringe in the whole world, never to have brochures. It's going to be amazing. We're going to be all in line. <laughs> ah, right, okay. Well, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> we're not going to be first, but uh, we're definitely mm -hmm. going to follow in those footsteps because... Yeah, paper's done, I think, isn't it? Paper is over. Um, Anita, have you done a brochure? Mute. On mute. Anita's from Ludlow, Fringe, everybody. You're on mute, Anita. There I am. <laughs> Couldn't unmute on the uh, screen. Um, hi there. Yeah, Anita from um, Ludlow Fringe here. Um, yes, we've done a brochure and um, we're actually, they've all nearly disappeared already and we haven't even started the festival. <laughs> actually, people around here seem to have been desperate for it, which um, is quite weird. <laughs> um, we had gone online to start with and we'd sold quite a few tickets online before, but um, as soon as the brochure's gone out, they've, yeah, they've flown off. So, uh, so we're really pleased about that. Um, not, I suppose where we live, we've got very, very low incidences of COVID here. I think I think the whole of Shropshire only had seven uh, positive cases in the last few weeks. So uh, um, I suppose being quite rural and isolated has its um, has its uh, good good things going for it. <laughs> What's happening in your festival? What sort of how are you how are you working it this year? Oh, we've. Um, We've got uh, three quite big outdoor stages, so we're doing live performances. Um, we've got um, we, we've rented uh, a space in a stately home, so we're using the whole of the front lawns. Um, we've got Shakespeare's there. We've got um, children's performances, and it's going to be absolutely beautiful. Really, really looking forward to that. Um, and the tickets again are selling really well. We've just been putting out banners all over the roads and everything. Um, oh, yeah. So, um, got an outdoor stage at one of our main uh, venues that we always use, the Ludlow Brewery. Uh, what better place could you have a venue <laughs> in a brewery? Not many more better. <laughs> we've got a big marquee that we've built outside, and um, we're just about to expand that as well. So um, we can have all the sides down. So essentially that is a, another outdoor space. And we've got, um, and we've also bought a trailer. We've bought our own um, stage, trailer stage, which we can multi-use as, uh, this, is, this will be uh, parked up in the castle square in the town, right outside the castle. And, um, uh, that's going to be our box office as well as at weekends. It's a community stage. So we have got lots and lots of um, themed weekends or themed days at the weekends. So we've got big dance day, big sing, big storytellers day. We've got a Your Glasto day where we're going to be getting people to perform over the Glastonbury weekend and okay. we're screening them onto a cardboard stage <laughs> of the pyramids. Oh, that sounds so good. Yeah, and that's going to be live streamed and go out. 
so we've got yeah lots of lots of plans for live performances and um, we've got a few indoor stages where we've um we've we've reduced our audience numbers to the absolute minimum you know so that there's plenty of uh, air and, and all fantastic this. that's brilliant thank you yeah. thank you Amazing. Amazing, and that's really, really soon. All of these festivals coming up amazing. We've still got a few fringes to hear from. Um, Helena, why don't you tell us what's going on com and the Nordic Fringe Network as well? Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much, and thanks to everyone who's spoken so far. It's so exciting to hear about all the digital work um, that you are doing uh, and all the live stuff that's coming back. Um, at Stockholm Fringe, we're quite keen on the whole digital um, work. Uh, we've, um, when the pandemic hit us last year, we just literally arrived back from Adelaide and the World Fringe Congress, and we were in the middle of, of programming, and we were thinking, obviously, no one knew what they were thinking, but we thought we just have to wait it out and see what's going on and what's going to happen. Uh, and in the end, we decided to ask our artists foremost what do you want to do this year can you participate how can you participate in what ways are you willing to participate uh, and therefore at the end of may which was about two months before the festival we sort of well decided we're going to go ahead and it's going to be a hybrid and it was based on the willing or the needs of our artists so which became this hybrid digital and incredible program actually last year and it reached a lot wider audiences and we learned a lot about that that we could also invite our previous artists into the program and participate live in chats in the stuffnet network discussions uh it was it was a huge success considering it was such a like a horrible time of uh, for the world um but uh, during that year, we did 75% digital work. We did 25% live. Um, and all of that sort of taught us to keep on being sort of on our feet and on our toes. We didn't know what to plan for this year. So we said, well, let's just sit it out a bit, see, plan for the digital base. We wanted to develop more of what we learned about the digital platforms, which meant that we during this year have developed several side projects to the festival. Um, and it's become a big debate in the Nordics, especially in Scandinavia, in regards to this digital developments, because it's a lot of resistance coming as well, saying, no, we don't want this to happen. We want to go back to where we were. We don't want to look ahead. We don't want to switch on another computer screen ever again which has been very interesting for the development of the digital work statistically, because that means that it's been developing two streams. One that's saying, no, we don't want this. One that's saying, but look at this, this is how we can do it. We don't necessarily need to have it as a, a plaster on a wound. We need to look at it as a way of actually developing the genres. So we're in the middle of this debate uh, with loads of our partners and with uh, Swedish institutes and et cetera. Um, but exciting for us is that we've always been interested in the digital uh, world because we wanted to reach out to more people. We think it's a very good way of accessibility targets. Uh, we need to open up, we need to learn as artists as well. I think all the artists need to learn how do we reach further with our work. And uh, so, this year's platform has been based a lot about building this healthy notion about the digital world. How can we use it so the artists can benefit from it and the audiences to benefit from it? How do you build your audience um, away from home, if you like? And then when it open up all the um, borders and all, the, when we can actually fly again and travel, maybe you have built up your audience in another country or another city which would mean that you have, all of a sudden you, you got a new audience that was there, not waiting, but that you will be well known perhaps. So it's a lot about that relationship, about how to engage the relationship in between the artist and the audience. Uh, we have also together with Gothenburg Fringe, uh, created a project which is called New Works for a New Reality, which is the theme for uh, Stockholm Fringe this year. Um, we will produce six 
acts that will be site specific around the cities uh, and that will be streamed live and will also be traveling later as a package for the Nordic Fringe Network uh, program. Uh, we have developed something which is um, I hope this is like a test trial for this year, which is a digital art performing art space, which we're hoping to uh, going to show a little bit of snippet of during our festival this year. But it will be the idea is that we can release it in next year, and it will be like a culture house, but online. And we will also release uh, we will come back stronger and monthly as of this year. So we will do the fringe every month. Uh, we would call it arena stuff and it will be both digitally but also live um, with an aim to have more presence in our city during the year and hopefully in the end we're going to be at a venue every day every week every month of the year um, but we are very excited about this year's program i know i need to wrap up now uh, we are very much pro digital we want to bring audiences together we want to bring our partners together we want to bring the world closer to us and us closer to the world so we we think we are all up for making new ideas and new uh, structures for artists also to get out there uh, touring uh, meet each other find new partners and um, platforms to develop amazing in short so everyone hear that yeah you're doing some brilliant partnerships is for sure um we've got uh, a few festivals to hear from and then if you've got any questions that you want to ask our fringes then get them ready i feel like uh we should go to gothenburg straight after um and then and then melbourne and cress and more from Tallinn. uh is that everybody so there's a few of you, there's a few of us, so, um, sorry. Yeah, a few of us are not much. To um, rush you up. <laughs> yeah. Keep it short and sweet, people. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Anna, go for it. Yeah, I was just going to say, I'm going to keep it very short and sweet since I, I just popped in here <laughs> quite unprepared. But um, yeah, we actually just had a meeting last week where we decided that we will go ahead with our festival as planned. That means with a program, a live program uh, mixed with local and international performers. Our festival is from 8th to 13th of September. So we hope that everything will have calmed down and open up even more by then. But we're also gonna have a digital program that is mostly going to happen in the days leading up to our festival um, and that is mostly Zoom performances, interactive Zoom performances, which is very important to us that the digital performances that we do include in the festival program have an interactive element and engage the audience so it's not just a matter of watching a pre-recorded performance. Uh, and that is also something that we want to integrate in the project we have with Stockholm Fringe, that um, the, the artists play with, with this interactive element of a digital show. Um, we're gonna see how, how, that's, how that's gonna turn out. So that's, it's really exciting. We're very much looking forward to exploring the digital space. We think it fits with our festival since we make artists explore unique venues that is our tagline the city is our stage so we usually have venues that are not typically being used as theater festivals so why not make the artists explore the digital space yeah yeah i think that's it <laughs> thank you oh it's great to have you i'm glad you popped in <laughs> um anna why don't you tell us about melbourne you've had some really exciting things happen recently yeah, so I might, um, uh, I'm Anna, I'm from Melbourne Fringe. Um, I might start by kind of going through really briefly what we did last year and then what our plans are for this year. So last year, um, Melbourne was in, in lockdown for, for most of the year. I started um, in this role in March last year and I didn't meet my colleagues until um, November when the festival uh, started. So um, it was pretty wild time and we our main aim really last year was to remain flexible to what artists wanted to do and so there was a lot of work done around kind of thinking about remote art 
and how you can kind of break that barrier where you're not necessarily working in digital space, um, but you might be bringing art to people's homes. So we had um, lots of examples of that with kind of international acts coming from the UK doing like a two week WhatsApp experience. Um, some folks that are in here today, Hugo and Dominique, from a collective called PonyCam, where they did a home delivered experience where you got a USB dropped off at your door and then it was a PowerPoint presentation that was plugged into your computer. Um, we had a Singaporean artist who did this incredible one-on-one -on -one interactive show, um, which was called Charlie. Um, and so we had such a, a range of examples of people really thinking outside of the box. And that was a really big part of what I tried to do in my role last year is to get artists thinking outside of the box so that it wasn't just pre-recording your show or just live streaming your show, but actually thinking about what liveness means and what it means to be bringing art into um, someone's home in an interesting and different way. So again, radio plays, audio guides, all that kind of stuff. It's really what we're interested in doing this year as well. And I think it's a super exciting opportunity um, for cross collaboration in terms of international work coming to Melbourne this year. We did it last year, we want to do it again. Um, uh, we're hoping that this year our festivals are from the 30th of September to the 17th of October. And we're really planning full steam ahead to go ahead with our big public art projects. Um, we're open access and we also commission works as, at, at Melbourne Fringe. Um, so we're hoping for, you know, a lot of our festival to be live this year, but we're still really committed to ensuring that we have remote and digital options for artists. So if you are thinking of doing um, a remote or digital work, um, please do reach out to us at artists at melbournefringe.com.au because we do have a lot of experience doing it from last year and we want to continue it going forward. It's something that we were wanting to do before COVID hit and it just kind of fast tracked us um, into oblivion. So um, lots of learnings, um, but this year we're really just full steam ahead trying to remain flexible, but Fingers crossed um, we're going to be able to have um, some live shows again this year in the city. Brilliant. Oh, it's amazing. It's really amazing to see what you guys are, are doing and achieving at the moment. It's massive and awesome. Um, who's next? Uh, who hasn't spoken yet? Uh, Celeste. Yeah, so... Um... I can't tell so much how it was because it will our, it will be our first, and I just um, see that I forgot to to tell you how what time zone we have. We have now twelve fifty two, noon, just to say. <laughs> and, yeah. yeah. So we will we will just to have a quick overview what we want to do and why I'm doing that. So we have. The, lo the most venues we have are mostly doing everything outside. They have terraces. I want to do something on the sea, on, on boats, like the, the stage will be on the land, on the seaside. We have um, little parts on the beach where we will do the street art stuff. We have venues on the beach what are restaurants or little coffee bars or little bars where we can build up big, big things for fire shows what will be then watched from the top on the seaside um yeah so we have restaurants bars all over the city everybody is exciting it's croatia it needs a bit longer it's the first time nobody knows exactly what it is so I'm pushing it, but everybody is very excited. And um, yeah, we want to make a bunch of everything. Like we want to support the locals. We want to talk about important teams. So we will have also speeches and workshops. We want to create a um, kind of film festival about climate, environment, and... Um, have a jury to pick the best presentation we want to yeah do as much as we can to bring all kind of art i say art not just artists together we will have a 
big um, kind of fair and the whole city stalls, everybody can present the handmade stuff. Uh, we will have stages in the city and we will collaborate with two other festivals. One is a local one, what is more Mediterranean fishing and stuff, things like this. And uh, yeah, it's completely different as we are on an island. So people have to come here to stay here, but we want to create something new and we want to bring people together and we want to show that um, like the crazy Croatian people <laughs> will love to have more crazy, but in a positive way said uh, artists on, this, on, um, on different kinds of places and stages to connect together, to support each other. We want to open a foundation to collect money, to support artists, to support um, projects of artists where they can apply. And, oh, there is much more to say, but um, I think the time is going up, so to yeah, have. That's right. <laughs> I, I, it's so great to have a festival that um, at your stage, not even happened yet. And, I'm already booking my flights. I think anyone else? <laughs> um, but get your questions ready. Um, I've already booked an Airbnb on the island, and I'm arriving next week. Happy to help out. Can be a volunteer. Anything you like, no problem. Yeah, we will make a lot of uh, partners with um, with. Um, we want to make partners with the hotels and apartments that everybody who wants to watch or to attend get a special kind of discount. And um, that's why we do it a little bit in the pre-season so we can get the best prizes for everyone that, um, yeah, everybody can afford. In Croatia, it's, it's not so expensive, so. It's Crescent Island. Brilliant. Crescent Island, <laughs> so, um, international tourists or is it largely local Croatian tourists that go to that island? No, we have here really, tourists from everywhere <laughs> like not just Europe but it's really from everywhere so yeah <laughs> and it's easy to reach there's so much airports around and it's really you are here in in one hour or in, in three four hours it depends but there's so much airports around Brilliant. and um, yeah fantastic. And it's kind of bit of different as the other world <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think you'll get some fringe tourists coming now as well. Brilliant. Um, just quickly, um, can you hear me? Am I frozen? Um, yeah, you're fine. Just quickly, Dan, did you want to say any more about Tallinn? And then we'll have a quick, quick Q&A. Sorry, run out of time. Go, go. Boom, 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 boom. Yes, oh, I'll be super quick. I'll call really, really quickly. Brrr. I just put it in chat as well about when our dates are. Oh, um, yeah, we're doing live theatre and digital. Mentioned that at the start as well. What I wanted to mention, though, um, uh, it's great to hear about all these digital things. What I think that um, we need to make clear for artists and also as organisations, and what I'm interested in is starting to define uh, digital to make it clear what it is because there's so many different versions of it. And when we say live digital... What does that actually mean? There's a lot of recorded stuff that is not actually live, but is being branded as live. Um, and I think that's a responsibility for all of us as artists to make sure that the audience knows what's they, what they're getting. Because if they see a shit show that's branded as live and it's not actually for digital, then it's not helping us all out to build a, a strong digital brand uh, internationally. And this is the exciting times that we're in. Absolutely. It's great to be in this. Um, I just know that from a festival and artist and venue perspective, um, it's confusing. Um, and I think that the, the where we're moving as well is um, all of these digital venues that we've got, like Living Space with Stockholm uh, setting up uh, the arena um, and everyone else doing their own digital um, uh, platforms, that we need to think that digital needs to be treated like, or digital venues need to be treated like theatres, exactly the same, that we can have multiple digital venues that come into your festival and provide different platforms because every artist wants a different style of platform. Some want chat on the sub side, some don't. Some people want video um, and we want high quality video, right? Zoom does not provide 1080 HD in video quality. So these are the platforms that we need to be uh, assisting uh, tech people and theatre practitioners to put together. I don't believe that there's going to be one platform that can do all that as in one theatre can't host every single show. 
uh, that is out there. Every artist will uh, uh, find a venue that suits them in a city from the size, the size of the stage, the lighting and tech and all of that as well. Digital venues, I think, need to be treated exactly the same as well. That uh, every digital, digital venue, living space, etc., that come up, wow, let's put them all together. And I think the most difficult bit is actually the integration for box offices to make sure that um, it can be a seamless experience for the customers uh, or the, the audiences coming in as well. That's all I wanted to mention on the digital stuff. Thanks for listening to all these fantastic people. Check out Talent Fringe, get in touch. We're putting it together right now. We're accepting applications for digital and uh, in theatre. We're uh, lightly curated, uncurated, open access. I don't know what we are, Fringe. Brilliant. Love that. Thank you. I reckon uh, we've got one question. Um, if anyone's got anything that, that hasn't been covered. Otherwise, I'm going to say that uh, you should go to worldfringe.com um, because on there, this is uh, very common for fringe festivals all over the world who are being um, and as amazing and in, in, ingenious and pivoting so incredibly as these ones um, in this Zoom session. Um, so please have a look and then our Facebook page as well. And there's also a, a calendar in worldfringe.com of all of the fringe festivals happening around the world when they start. So you can check that out as well. And it's just in the events drop down, there's a calendar there that you can have a look for um, festivals that are coming up and how, and you'll be able to go to them all through digital means, I expect, as well as uh, in person to most of them. Um, I, that just, I'm gonna end because we're on midday, but I just really wanna say thank you to all the fringes who have come and spoken today. You're massively inspiring and thank you to all the artists as well who have come along and um, all those who are still touring um, and sticking with it, you're also an inspiration to us. So thank you everybody.